It turns out JWST images are just like buses. You wait all Christmas for one and then a whole load come all at once. We only just heard about the first ever exoplanet confirmed by JWST. And now we've gotten images of a nearby star forming region inside a dwarf galaxy that orbits the Milky Way, the dusty debris disk around another star, and even some galaxies that might be up to 11 billion years old. Let's start with the absolutely stupendously beautiful image here. This is NGC 346, a dynamic star forming region that lives in a small galaxy called the Small Magellanic Cloud. This is a much smaller so-called dwarf galaxy that orbits our own Milky Way. It's about 210,000 light years from us and is a cluster of stars inside a huge cloud of gas and space dust. What's surprising is that the Small Magellanic Cloud is typically very low in any element that's heavier than hydrogen and helium, and those are precisely the things that usually make up space dust. This new image though shows a region that contains a lot of space dust. This is a huge surprise to come out of JWST, and work to understand this discrepancy is going on right now, but it sure is interesting. They thought that observing dust here would be very hard because there wouldn't be much of it, but it turns out there's actually loads. All of this mystery dust makes this an incredible place for new stars to form, as the dust can clump together and collapse to form the huge balls of dusty gas that go on to ignite into stars. This image shows a surplus of the building blocks for both stars and potentially planets, and of course, it's absolutely beautiful. For me, some of the highlights include this structure that looks like the head of a dragon spitting out fireballs, where the eyes of the dragon and the balls it's spitting are especially hot regions of space. Also, these nice wispy structures in the upper right show that there must be a lot of wind coming off of nearby stars. As stars grow and collect matter, they can throw off stellar winds, and these can carve out the small structures like this. Other examples, like these curly ribbons, can outline colder regions in the nebula, and form many pillars that look, well, kind of familiar. This region in particular was chosen to be studied because it's similar in composition to the whole universe was about two or three billion years ago, a time we call cosmic noon. During that time, star formation was happening all over the place, not just in small regions like this, but it can still provide us with an important view of the history and evolution of the universe. In fact, this image and the heavy elements it reveals could even suggest that rocky planets might have formed earlier in the history of the universe than we previously thought possible. Over the next few million years or so, the radiation from all of these stars being born will continue to erode the cloud, and more and more of these filament-like structures will slowly emerge. The observations of this also contain spectra taken by Nurspec on JWST. These haven't been made public yet, but will reveal the exact composition of the materials forming the stars. That's pretty hard work though, so it needs more time to get it absolutely right. Let's also compare the image with a Hubble image of the exact same region. We can see clear increases in resolution and the amount of structures we can see too. That's not to take anything away from the Hubble one though. It's still absolutely beautiful, but JWST just hits differently sometimes. I think it's amazing to watch the blues of the Hubble image melt away into the red of JWST revealing more to us about this region as it does so. I could watch this for so long. However, I won't make you do the same if you don't want to, so let's see what else JWST has been up to, and I'll leave links in the description so you can play with a slider tool between the two images if you want to. Next up, we got to see the inner workings of a dusty debris disk that surrounds a nearby star. That star is a red dwarf, so it's smaller and cooler than our own sun, and these images are the first time a known debris disk has been imaged at the long infrared wavelengths that JWST can see. We saw two images of the region around the star, which is called AU Mike and is 32 light years away in a constellation called Microscopium. Yeah, it's literally named after a microscope. Astronomers are not the best at naming things. I hope you realize that by now. Using the near infrared camera NERCAM on JWST, the star was imaged with a coronagraph. This is basically a tool that blocks out the very intense light from the central star which could actually be bright enough to damage the highly sensitive telescope, and it also makes it easier to see faint things near the star. That's why there's these little pretend white stars in the centre, 
showing us where the real star is, but we didn't actually image the star itself. The dashed circle shows us the full region covered up by the coronagraph when this data was taken. It's pretty remarkable too, to think about how good the resolution really is here. Just look at all of the actual structure we can see in the disk. The two different images show the data for two different wavelengths of light. The blue one on top shows light that has a wavelength of 3.56 microns, and the red one on bottom is longer light at 4.44 microns. We can see that the disk is a little brighter in the blue image, so probably contains many fine dust grains that can direct shorter wavelengths in our direction. The disk actually stretches out 9 billion kilometers from the star, and that's 60 times further than the distance from the Earth to the Sun. The resolution and detail is so good that in the future we might even be able to use images like this to detect giant gas planets orbiting other stars. These can be difficult to detect in the usual ways, so this might be a great alternative. We also recently got to see some awesome early galaxies presented by the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey SEERS. The ones they showed off are especially cool because they have a feature called a bar in them. A bar? More like cheers than seers, am I right? These galaxies are all very old, ranging from 8.4 to an incredible 11 billion years old. This region here is where the galaxies sit on the sky, although they're very small from our point of view, so you probably can't see them without a telescope. But this constellation here is the Plough, or the Big Dipper, which can be an easy one to spot. So many of us might have accidentally looked in the direction of these galaxies many times before. The bars, which are in all six of the galaxies, here, 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 and here, are pretty cool because bars are great at producing new stars. Just remember, bars equals stars. This is now evidence that bars, which we see in about two thirds of all spiral galaxies, might form very early and stick around for a long time. This tells us a lot about how galaxies and their stars form and evolve, and the bar likely plays a very influential role in creating the final structure of the galaxy. These galaxies have been previously seen by Hubble, but look at this comparison. The JWST ones are so much more detailed. To be fair, JWST does have a few advantages over Hubble. It's bigger for a start, but more importantly it sees in infrared light rather than visible light like Hubble does. This makes it much better at looking through dusty regions, so it can pierce the dust in these galaxies, seeing deeper into their souls and extracting loads of details. Early objects like this also emitted their light a long time ago, and it will have been stretched to longer wavelengths by the expanding universe in a process called redshift. Since infrared light is a longer wavelength of light than visible light, this makes JWST especially good for looking at distant objects, including these galaxies. If you want more details on why infrared light is great and why JWST chose to look at infrared light, then the next thing you should watch is this video here. It will tell you all about it using a really cool demo that involves a smoke machine. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.